I have no idea how I'm going to follow dripping cum. Um, <laughs> this is kind of an innocent story, but um, has some sex in it. Okay. This is from the lover's card in my book. Um, each chapter is another tarot card in the spread, and the cards remind me of stories from my past, and this is a story from my past. So, For the next several weeks, I woke up early to curl my hair. I wanted to look pretty for him. I wanted him to like me, but Zach was a hippie with Birkenstocks and socks. Hippies never liked me. I was too fancy for them in my cashmere sweaters and silk scarves. Still, I sectioned my hair into pieces and rolled each strand with a huge hot curler. As I waited for the heat to do its magic, I applied my new Victoria Principal makeup. Then I took out the rollers, bent over, ran my fingers through my hair, flipped back up, and voila, I was one of Charlie's angels. <clears throat> I sprayed opium behind my ears and walked to the sea train, my curls bouncing up and down with each step. I smelled like cinnamon, ylang ylang, and vanilla. Zach smelled like unwashed skin. I liked that smell. I liked that he was everything I wasn't. It took one month of curling and bouncing and smiling for Zach to ask me out. It was at the end of October, the air was cool, the leaves were falling, and the plan was to meet in front of Bob's library on Washington Square Park and research Brooke told Brecht for our experimental theater class. So what if it wasn't a real date? Um, I didn't need dinner, I needed to be near him. As I approached the building, I could see Zach standing in front, his six foot two frame looming, looming over everyone, his brown hair blowing around like leaves. I felt a shiver when our eyes met. I smiled, he nodded. He was too cool to show me a toothy grin. We spent hours wandering through racks of books together, revealing the details of our lives, the names of siblings, cities we had visited, music we liked. At one point, his arm grazed my breast, and I felt my entire body burn. Every inch of me was on fire. I tried to act casual, but my face flushed, and I'm pretty sure my pupils dilated. I giggled awkwardly and pointed to a copy of William Blake's The Marriage of Heaven and Hell for no apparent reason. <laughs> I've never read Blake, I said, twirling my hair, cocking my head to the right. He whipped out his wallet. Want to see something? His voice was so deep I thought I might fall in. I was expecting him to show me a Blake poem. Instead, he pulled out a photo. This is Maggie. This is the girl who broke my heart. I grabbed the picture from him. Who was this Maggie girl? Was she pretty, prettier than me? Her eyes were blue-green. My mother used to tell me that blue eyes were prettier than brown, and that blue-eyed blondes were the prettiest women on earth. My eyes looked like dark brown M&Ms, and my hair was the color of night. Maggie's hair was strawberry blonde, more orange than blonde. I wondered where that fell on the pretty scale. I stared at Maggie's wallet-sized photo for what felt like an hour. I wasn't sure why but she made me want Zach more. I wanted to win him from her. A week later, Zach invited me to see Henry in June. We sat in the fourth row, right of center, the lights dimmed, the previews played, then the movie started. I could see his profile in the flickering light and wondered what he was thinking. I uncrossed my legs and fidgeted in my seat, looking back and forth between him and the screen. He kept his eyes straight ahead the entire time, his head perfectly still. I was starting to think he had forgotten about me, but then he pressed his leg against mine and grabbed my thigh. I could feel the heat from his body enter me, seep through my clothes, and sink into my skin. I bit my lip and reached over him for his leg. Our arms now crisscrossed, my thighs quivered as we rubbed each other's legs, watching Fred Ward and Uma Thurman and Maria Del Medeiros, if that's how you pronounce her name, kiss and grope and fuck on screen. When the movie was over, Zach walked me home, his arm wrapped around my waist the entire time. There was something about his size and strength with which he held me that made me feel protected, small even. It's hard to feel small at 5'8". When we got to my building, we stood facing each other. He bent down, held my face in his hands, and kissed me goodnight. Our first kiss, warm, wet, deep. We spent the next month kissing on corners underneath yellow street lit street lamps, fooling around to Ella Fitzgerald and Miles Davis watching Woody Allen movies, his head buried in my neck, his winter coat smelling like me, like opium. 
When he finally invited me to his dorm room, his roommates were out for the night. I saw that he had a framed picture of Maggie on his desk. As I approached it, I noticed a burgundy silk painting hanging on the wall with a poem scrawled across the fabric and gold cursive, Love Maggie, it said at the bottom. I felt hot again, this time from jealousy. I didn't paint on silk, I didn't write poetry. I was pretty though, I knew he thought I was pretty. Maybe it was a sex thing. Zach and I had kissed and dry humped and felt each other up over our clothes, but we had never seen each other naked. I still hadn't gone to third base. I turned around and asked, was Maggie a good lover? desperate for no to be the answer. Zach was sitting on his bed, flipping through a magazine. We never had sex, he said, continuing to flip the pages, his head still down. When I had sex with Jennifer, it ruined everything, made things weird. I didn't want it to happen with Maggie, so no, we never had sex, but we broke up anyway. His eyes seemed to droop more than usual. I hated her hold on him. I hated her blue-green eyes and her strawberry blonde hair and her stupid happy smile. I wanted to smack her. I excused myself to the bathroom and came out moments later half naked, wearing a see-through turquoise matching bra and panty set my mother had given me. As I made my way over to the bed, I could feel the night air ripping through the room. The windows were single pane and loose. I tried to keep my arms to my sides so he could see my body, but I felt too exposed, too chilled. I crossed my arms over my chest and walked the rest of the way. You're gorgeous, really gorgeous, he stammered. Zach scooted over and lifted the covers for me. He seemed bigger than usual. I worried he might crush me. We kissed, and he gently caressed me up and down, back and forth in circles, tiny circles, causing all the hairs on my body to stand on end. I warmed up right away and relaxed with every touch. I felt his breath in my ears, his lips on my neck, his hands on my breasts, on my tummy. I gasped. His fingers had found their way inside me. It was levitating, higher and higher. When I came, I shook so hard he had to hold me down. My breath eventually returned to normal as we lay side by side in his twin bed. The light from the street was casting shadows on the wall. It was quiet, too quiet. And then Zach started to sing. Almost blue, almost doing things we used to do. What's that, I asked. Just a song, he said, and continued to sing. There's a girl here, and she's almost you. Why are you singing that now, I asked, <laughs> with my side, staring at him, examining his face, waiting for an answer. He didn't say anything. What are you thinking about, Zach? I propped myself up, all the blood in my body now stirring from worry. She haunts me, he said. I can't get her out of my head. I crawled off the bed and made my way to the bathroom in the dark. I felt for the light switch and shut the door. Dropping onto the cold, dirty tile, I sobbed silently, holding my breath, not wanting him to hear me. He was asleep when I got back. His face looked peaceful and sweet. I loved him. I couldn't help it. He was the first boy to see me naked, the first boy to give me an orgasm. He was my first everything so far. I wished I could be his first something, but all his firsts were taken.